Earlier this week, Google announced TensorFlow, a new machine learning system that's being utilized throughout their line of products like Gmail and Google Photos. Now Google, though, wants to do something different. It wants to allow everyone to have access to the code and the programming behind TensorFlow. By open sourcing this system, Google thinks that researchers, developers, and hobbyists outside the big company will be able to share their ideas more efficiently than ever before. And build new things. Here to discuss the impact of this move by Google is New York Times best-selling author and CEO of Erico Communications, Eric Yeverbaum. Thanks for coming in. Uh, thanks so much for having me as always. All right. So why is Google doing this now? Well, you know, it's because they're smart. They're Google. But I mean, they've never done it before. No, they haven't done it before. Google is regarded within the community as about five to seven years ahead of everybody else in artificial intelligence. What Google is doing, which everyone else has already done, is they're recruiting people from the academic world. All of those people that are coming to work for Google have the same philosophy. They want to share code because the more people that use the code, the more people that use code in different apps, the more it can develop, the faster it can de develop. So this is really a, a first big step for Google to be doing in particular, and I think makes a really big statement about artificial intelligence in general. So by open sourcing TensorFlow, they're able to share some of the technology that's behind recognizing faces in Google Photos, the smart reply that we've talked about, about getting email and then having the artificial intelligence indicate what you will say back without you having to type it, speech recognition. These are technologies that are also available in IBM Watson, Amazon Machine Learning, and of course Microsoft Azure. So how does Google's TensorFlow compare to its competitors? Well, you know, they have something they call, it's called deep learning. Um, it's more, they are more advanced than absolutely anybody. The things that you're talking about that we all see, or not all actually, some of us see today, like <laughs> talk about, you know, having a reply to your email. Somebody can actually email me and get a reply that's in my voice and say what I would say in the tonality that I would say it in. Somebody can, I can be at a party and somebody can take a picture and I'm walking in the background and uh, on Facebook, uh, uh, visual recognition will tag me. Even though I didn't want to be in the picture, even though the person taking the picture doesn't even know who I am, uh, you know, I'll get recognized. People see those sorts of things. What they don't see, because they're not out in the general public yet, are, are all the things that uh, artificial intelligence can do. And it depends who you talk to. Uh, about when will artificial intelligence, which is, this is really remarkable, when will artificial intelligence surpass human intelligence? Uh, uh, depending on who you talk to, whether it's an optimist or a pessimist, even a pessimist will tell you that it will, uh, artificial intelligence will surpass human intelligence uh, before kids that are born today uh, in their lifetime. Well, what's interesting about the Google case specifically in terms of AI is that in addition to having TensorFlow and being able to do the things you just mentioned, it's also accessing all of your data, right? If you Absolutely. use Gmail, it's obviously a free product, so that means you are the product. They're gathering all of your location data on Google Maps. What do you think is the main concern here for you or for your uh, clients when it comes to matching up this data because this is the other side of cyber attacks, right? You yep. have lots of open information, lots of personal data, plus a lot of I, I, other types I, I, of yes. information getting matched up and then cyber attacks become more sophisticated. Does artificial intelligence, would it possibly move in that direction? Uh, well, yeah, you know, we're open all sorts of things. That, 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 you know, your phone, when you opt in, when, when you say, when you, uh, you know, agree to the terms and conditions, you gave away your whole life, everything. Of course. From the second that you walk out the door, the route that you work, how, how, so how fast you, you work, the weather. So where do you see, though, specifically this going in terms of challenging the consumer and being an issue, or do you think that it's all positive? Because your spin um, so far seems to be relatively positive, but there are some well, concerns no, of, look, I'm, I'm, of what could happen. I'm a privacy, you know, I'm a right to privacy, you know, nut. Uh, you know, I think that our, our privacy has been so invaded. On the other hand, I'm not so interesting. Invade my, go ahead, invade my privacy all you want. I, I, nothing interesting about me. I'm not building a nuclear weapon or, you know, doing anything that I wouldn't do in real life, you know, in the virtual world. However, uh, yes, of course that's a concern. You want to, do you want your whole life telegraphed? Do you want a, a machine to be able to know what you're going to do 
before you actually do it? A lot of people would say no to that. Other people, like directionally challenged people, like GPS. Sure. I could never get anywhere well, without my GPS. Well, there's always a, you know, two sides or multiple sides to, to a situation like this. How much do you think that the open sourcing is a cause or an effect of uh, Sundar Pichai? He's the new CEO of Google. He's doing a lot of new different things to reposition Google for the long term. Does this have to do with him? Um, sure, in part. I mean, he's brilliant. I mean, the... In our lifetime, the technology is evolving. That's not new. The rate at which it's evolving, the speed at which it's evolving, that is new. It gets faster every day. And this is, this is a, a company who's a leader recognizing that and wanting to make sure that they stay in first place. All right, so you're bullish on Google and TensorFlow. Indeed I am. All right, great, Eric. Thank you so much. Follow Eric on Twitter at Real Yaverbaum. And for more on Google and TensorFlow, check out foxnews.com. I'm Jolene Kent, and you're watching Tech Take. Thank <laughs> you.